Hello Facebook, Instagram and social media world. My name is Dr. Rory Robertson. Uh, thanks for checking out my page, which is all about the science behind food and nutrition. And I'm hoping uh, over the next few weeks to carry out a few interviews with people from various backgrounds talking about the importance of food and nutrition in our lives and in our health. And last week I was kindly joined by a friend of mine, John Ryan, who's a professional rugby player for Munster and for Ireland. And we talked about the importance of nutrition uh, in the diet and, and in the lifestyle of a professional sports person. Person, uh, and particularly the importance of nutrition and diet in gut health and John's experience with inflammatory bowel disease which is a, a terrible disorder which uh, affects your intestines. So I've split the interview up into uh, a couple of different parts which I'll be uh, releasing over the next couple of days and I hope you enjoy it. Another excellent carry from him, here's Kilcoyne once more just short. There's an advantage here again for Munster. John, thank you very much for, for agreeing to talk to me. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't want to skirt over the fact, actually, first of all, that you've had the most like incredible season uh, uh, this like, year, uh, being the first choice Munster, uh, tight head, six caps under your belt. Did you imagine this time last year you'd be in this position? Uh, probably not, no. Um, I was sitting on the bench all last year, so, <laughs> so definitely not. Um, but so, delighted with it, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a, a different life for you now, I guess. So I want to talk just about like, food and nutrition. So a lot of people who are uh, budding rugby players or sports people or people who are just interested in um, keeping fit uh, are always interested in what professional sports people eat. How important do you think nutrition and diet is for you as a rugby player, but also particularly as a prop as well? Um, yeah, it's massively important, obviously. like For me... To maintain size and um, maintain my body comp as well is very important. So a very high protein diet and around trains, carb intake is very high too. So uh, just to maximize recovery and all that. So it's kind of, yeah. that's the main thing really is just refueling after heavy training sessions and matches. So I think a lot of people who are kind of interested in doing a sport professionally or just at an amateur level or just keeping fit, they kind of like would like to know uh, what rugby players uh, or what professional sports people eat. So starting off, how many meals uh, or snacks would you eat a day? Kind of, uh, and does that change on training or match days? Yeah, well, you'd have your obviously you'd have uh, your three meals like every every other normal person, but that's obviously not going to cut it. So in the mornings, like we'll have a huge kind of a breakfast. I go in every morning before training, and I'll have. Three poached eggs, two bacon, soda toast, mm. beans, you know, delight, all that kind of thing. And that's my morning breakfast. But then we might have gym session and then you have to take a protein shake. Yeah. You might have, um, do we, there's always, we're, we're sponsored by uh, Glynisk and they give us uh, yogurts as well. Okay. Just to check, I think, I think it's Glynisk. Um, <laughs> you better make uh, sure that's right. Yeah. Um, so we've, we're sponsored by yogurts, so we have a yogurt as well. And then you go on for your, you train maybe one more time. You have a lot of meetings yeah. um, and during the day and uh, we're fed lunch inside, so that can vary from anything. It depends on how heavy the trainings are, but usually our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sessions, if that's when we train, yeah. are quite heavy, so we'll have um, a good deal of carb involved, like you know, rice or potatoes or whatever, and um, we'll have our meat, fish or fish or meat or whatever, you know. Okay. And then a massive salad selection. But we should see the piles of plates some fellas have. <laughs> so there's that and then we go on, we probably train in the afternoon and uh we'll have protein shakes in between and yeah. when we come off the pitch, our nutritionist Emma is always there with a variety of things. It could be a protein bar, it could be built on, it could be it could be anything really. And, okay. and then the rest of the day is yours. So typically you'll go home, you'll have your dinner. <laughs> Similar to your lunch, um, and then by, by night time, you're always going to get hungry again. So okay, you're yeah. talking, moving on to your third, fourth snack of the day on top of your three meals. And did the lads, or something. did the lads eat different, like depending on what position you are, like would they eat different things or is it just different quantities? I think, um, I think it could be different things as well as different quantities, really. Like I see some backs eating a lot more than some of the forwards, but um. I don't know, I think obviously you need to be a lot leaner as a back. Yeah. You want to have a lot of lean muscle as a forward too, but for me, I'm kind of uh, obviously a tighter prop and 
I don't know, weight people are gonna would give out about oh you don't need all that weight, it's all about technique, but yeah. weight's a massive issue. There's some huge players there. This year I've come across fellas who are hundred and fifty kilos and I'm one nineteen at a push, so yeah. I, I need to force that weight on and okay. I, I can't really put on much more than that and yeah. I can't afford to be much lighter than that either. Yeah, so yeah. It's kind of a balance of protein and um and and uh just getting the right amount of carb without carb getting well. too much uh Fat up and so you know. I guess on match days then, especially the carbohydrates are important, like in the morning as well. And I think what's interesting about that these days is, especially like all this, it's a lot of nonsense you see online is like carbohydrates being demonized so badly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people saying you know we should be eating so few carbohydrates, but like they're so important for everyone. Not like not only just me, like a regular Joe Soap, but like especially for a rugby player like that because they're they're what give you your energy. Yeah. And I think an interesting. Uh, comment i heard before from someone is carbohydrates could be anything from lentils to lollipops you know the, exactly. the word just encompasses yeah. so many different things and of course there's good carbohydrates and bad carbohydrates so i guess on the morning of a match you have to eat a lot of carbohydrates yeah you? well uh, it's the day before the game is it's where you start building uh, for us uh, that's what we're kind of drilled into doing is having a big uh, carb building day okay. yeah. and uh, obviously that night we kind of have our red meat or whatever okay. it's just what's in our diet i honestly for me, I wouldn't have much backing to that, but it's, yeah. that's what we're in our plan. So we do that, and then um, the next day for a pre-match meal, it's carb-based as well. Okay. But uh, it'll be your pastas, your your um, or your potatoes, or whatever, yeah. whatever it be, you know. And then probably uh, usually it's gonna be chicken or turkey. Then the day of the game. Okay. Again. Yeah. Tell me why. <laughs> we follow the protocol and it's all there ready made for us before the game, four hours before kickoff. That's yeah. what we eat. So. Okay. Well, I suppose, yeah, carbohydrates are like the state, like, like you break down carbohydrates into, into glucose, which is like the energy for your cells. So that's why you need it before uh, a match the night before. And it's the same thing that marathon runners, I suppose, do. They uh, carb load for maybe four or five days before a marathon because it, it just builds up those glycogen stores. And so you can break it down then to give you the energy. Whereas protein, on the other hand, is more important as soon as you finish, you know, to, mm-hmm. so I guess you're having protein shakes as soon as you finish a match or a training session. Exactly. Or, yeah. 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 We have protein shakes that straight after a game where it's uh, protein milk or something like that, you know. Yeah. That's what we have, um, temple dairy, I think we okay. drink, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, sure. I guess that's just like, cause you're taking such an impact on your muscles, you know, when you're training or when you're in a match, you need that protein then. Mm. So what I'd like to talk to you a bit is just because it's interesting to my research is about the gut microbiota which uh, and gut health which i suppose is relevant to you as well which we can talk about in a bit your ulcerative colitis um and the concept of the gut microbiota which is all like the bacteria in your intestines and all the other microorganisms and it's shown in recent years all this really interesting research how important they are for your health not only for your weight uh, for your, how your immune system functions um, your blood sugar, your cholesterol, everything, and also even maybe about how your how your brain works as well. Is there any appreciation <coughs> within kind of the Munster Ireland squads for gut health in particular, or or any knowledge about the microbiota that the nutritionists has ever have ever gone through with you? Well, the most we got to that is make sure we take our probiotics, like you know, yeah. we take yakels every. Whatever a few days they just give them out and oh so so does everyone take them or is that was that just you every, no everyone actually takes them but oh, okay. that's probably brought in um I think there's been a few fellas with uh, stomach issues not okay. necessarily IBD but um so they're kind of trying to pro- promote more probiotics yeah. in our oh, diet that's and, interesting and just multivits and stuff like that yeah. that's all obviously a given because there was very recent research by people my colleagues um down in Cork. They had a paper came out this year and a few years ago, and they actually looked at the Irish rugby team. I think it was before the 2011 World Cup when they were in training camp for that, and they uh, took fecal samples from them and looked at their gut microbiota to see what it was like compared to a normal person walking down the street. And what they found was the rugby players had much higher diversity of microbes in their intestines, meaning they had much um, much more types of bacteria and other uh, microorganisms in their gut. And that's good. That's kind of a marker of health because there's so many different types of bacteria that carry out all these different functions for our health. It's good to have all the different types. They can do all all the different things. And what was also interesting was that they showed that the more protein uh, someone ate, the higher the diversity as well. So, of course, then uh, an unhealthy 
gut microbiota, as I said, can lead to lots of problems like weight gain and various intestinal diseases. And you've had a, a bit of experience with that, um, which might not necessarily be due to do with the gut microbiota, but you uh, have uh, struggled for a few years with uh, ulcerative colitis, which is a horrible disorder. Um, for example, Darren Fletcher uh, mm-hmm. from Manu it effectively ended his career, you know, so it's good to see you managing it so well. Can you tell us just a small bit about ulcerative colitis? Well, uh, initially it was obviously it's blood, blood in your stool. It's kind of, yeah. um, it's kind of uh, obviously ulcers in your colon. So uh, it started off very small. It was affecting like 10% of my uh, colon. So uh, it wasn't that bad and I was able to treat that. Um, but they say stress brings it on. I don't know if that's true. I didn't exactly feel too stressed at the time. Maybe I had a lot uh, on at the time. It was when I just started turning professional. So um, it eventually spread over three years. It spread to 95% of my colon, which right. really um, took its uh, toll. I mean, I, I was kind of... It's really hard because uh, obviously you need to go to the bathroom a lot, even though you probably don't need to. You're just passing yeah. blood or whatever. So yeah. it... Trips in the car to the shop are hard. Trips, trips. Yeah. Obviously, me and uh, when we used to drive to uh, Monsters Base in Cork and Limerick, so having to drive to Cork and Limerick was a mammoth task. So uh, really, right. I, I probably knew every toilet from uh, Cork <laughs> to Limerick. But yeah, yeah. it's it's not great, and it, it obviously uh, affects your mental state then, yeah. and it obviously affects your performance in the pitch. But uh, yeah, and over you... time, I uh, I was getting flare ups, and I had to go on uh, numerous um, steroids. Uh, steroid doses so really? that was kind of what kind of tried to calm it down yeah 